welcome to the Activated Storyteller's 24th podcast, November 30th, 2006. This week's story is The Three Little Pigs, an English folktale. Hi, I'm Kimberly. And I'm not Dennis. And I'm what? Who are you? (laughs) No, I'm Dennis. And I'm Kimberly. And I'm Zephyr. And together we are the Activated Storytellers. Well, we're in Los Angeles, California this week, and we just celebrated our Lemony Snicket Thanksgiving. And it was yummy. Well, I mean, unfortunately, it was yummy. Yes, uh, I believe we mentioned this before, but I've been reading a series of unfortunate events all the way from 1 through 13 to Mom and Dad, so we decided that since we're sort of uh, coming near to the conclusion of the story, it would be appropriate to have a Lemony Snicket Thanksgiving, so that's exactly what we did. Well, that and we heard the recipe for one of Sunny's salads. I, I call it Sunny's salad because she's one of the first things that she cooks in the book. It has black beans in it and mango and black pepper and celery. And it was rather intriguing. So we said, hey, we need to have that for Thanksgiving. And this came actually the day after Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving we had to wait for Zephyr and his uh, big sister, we call her, to go to Disneyland. Where they spent the entire day from about 9.30 in the morning to almost midnight. More like 9 in the morning. Park opened at 8, but uh, we were a little caught up in lines because it was a little bit crowded toward the beginning of the day. But by the time midnight rolled around, the place was basically deserted. So, yes, well, we went to Disneyland, and one of the more interesting things that I've been waiting to see them do for a while is Haunted Mansion on Holiday, which is where they take the Haunted Mansion and they deck it all out with the Nightmare Before Christmas regalia. And I mean completely decked out. Like, there's not a single thing that's anywhere near remotely the same about the Haunted Mansion. Everything is changed. From the outside decorations to every single detail, there's a different audio track on the ride. There's different... The animatronics are saying different things. Some of them have even been uh, replaced just for the holiday season. They change a lot of things. Also spectacular to see were the changes they made to Pirates of the Caribbean. And what do they do? Well, uh, for those of you who don't know, Pirates of the Caribbean in the movie was inspired by the ride, which has been around for 40 plus years. It's been around for quite some time. And uh, now they've actually taken some ideas and characters from the movie and put them in the ride. For the, the part when you sail in between the pirate ship and the castle and they're shooting the cannons at each other and there's a big bay. They're playing different music and now uh, Captain Barbosa is on the deck of the pirate ship shooting the cannons at the fort. And they've also, got, they've also installed air blasters, so now you feel the cannons blasting on you. And, and Jack Sparrow, of course, is now on the ride. There's about three instances of Jack Sparrow on there. And even Davy Jones makes an appearance, a somewhat dramatic appearance. So the ride inspired the movie, and now the movie has inspired the ride. It's kind of come full circle. Art I remember about ten years ago is Zephyr never getting on the ride. Back when he was about five years old, it took, we had a year pass for, and we were based out of Los Angeles for a while, had a year pass, and it took a year to get him on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Now, what else did you ride this time? Uh, I think we did just about everything. We did the uh, the revised Space Mountain, which is relatively recent. Uh, also of interest, I have to say, though, it was the roaming Jack Sparrow. They now have a, a Jack Sparrow character in full costume and everything. Uh, roaming around, usually in the Pirates area in Disneyland. You don't want his job, do you? <laughs> Not only would I love his job, uh, I would I would pay to do it. Go ahead, give us some Jack Sparrow. What do you want me to say? Anything. Anything at all. Anything at all. Anything at all. All right. <clears throat> what do you say to three shillings and we forget the name? Right. We also got a chance to tour Santa Monica. We walked from the boardwalk in Santa Monica down to the boardwalk in Venice. Quite a colorful um, place to be. Lots of people around on, uh, I think we were there on a Saturday, and lots of people, lots of interesting people there on the boardwalk. One reason there are so many people at Venice Beach is because there are lots of uh, vendors and performers and all kinds of attractions there, and we saw a really wonderful group of performers. I, I think they were great. They had the really uh, intriguing way that they controlled the crowd, and I knew they were controlling the crowd. I mean, we've been around the block. We know how to work it. But um, I was so intrigued. We, we went ahead and had to stop and watch them. There were five African-American guys who were jumping, and they were doing some dynamic acrobatic tricks. Yeah, they they had the, a break dancing thing going. They used kind of skills similar to break dancing, and they did a lot of a lot of flips over the open asphalt, which I don't know if I would have attempted. Not only flips, but flips over people from the crowd that they just pulled up on stage there, and um, you know, running dynamic, f- flying, and uh, flips and tricks and and comedy routine. They had a whole comedy routine built into the whole act that they did there on the street. 
Yeah, they had uh, five people sort of standing there bent down in a line, and then they actually had a guy flip over all of them. Yeah, but they make you wait for that, and they build it up. Now Zephyr just gave away the punchline. Yes, and while they're building it up, they pass the buckets for money. And it worked. I'm sorry, but, you know, they, they got our money. It worked. They were good. They deserved it. That's the clever part about those street performers, as opposed to others, is that they get your money before the end of the show, before the big grand finale, rather than having you leave before you pay them. This week we have a story for you, and I'm, I imagine it's one that you've heard before, but I don't imagine you've ever heard it like this. This is the story of The Three Little Pigs. Once upon a time, there was a family of figs. There was a puther mig and, and the pea little trigs. One day, the puther mig decided that they were too poor, so she sent the pea little trigs out into the world to make their own way. Oh my, the time has come for me to wind you on your say. Now, now, Hester, like, oh my gosh, yeah. Now, now, off you go, it's lime for you to teave. I'm so sure, like, I'm totally not ready for this. And Jester. Like Zoinks, which one of us is Jester? Oh, Jester, fairy bunny. Off you go. Zoinks. Lester. Yeah, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm right here. I just got back in from whopping the chud. Now, now, off you go. It's time to leave. Goodbye. Okay, leave you later. The first piddle leg went out walking till she came to a man carrying a big strundle of ball. Oh my gosh! Like, what's that? Hey there, little pig. Why, well, this here's some straw. You want some? Oh, like, I could totally build a house with that and, like, oh, decorate it and everything. Oh my gosh! I'd love it. <laughs> So he gave her the strundle of baw, and she took it and built a strauss out of haw. And then along came the wig bad wolf. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, like, who are you? I'm the wig bad wolf. Please do let me into your humble abode. Uh, no, 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 no. Like, my mother totally warned me about you. Uh uh. You're not getting in this house. Not by the chair of my henny hen hen. Which I don't even have because I'm a girl. Like, you know. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll howl your blows down. So he huffed and he puffed and he howled her blows down. <gasps> Like, my house is totally destroyed. Oh, my gosh. She took off running to bind her brothers. Now, the second piddle leg came to a man carrying a big strundle of Bix. It's a big strundle of Bix. Well, I, I was carrying this here uh, strundle of Bix, but I, I reckon it's getting a bit uh, too much for my back, you know, what with the arthritis and everything. So, uh, I, I guess you could have some of this here strundle of Bix if you want it. Like, I could build a house out of that. That'd be great. Well, uh, okay, here you go. So he took the big stundle of Bix, and he built a stouse of Hicks. And along came the wig bad wolf. Hello, hello, hello. Like, who's there? I'm the wig bad wolf. Wig bad wolf, I heard about you. Now please, do let me into your house. Not by the chair of my henny hen hen. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll hoe your blouse down. So he puffed and he huffed and he hoo his blouse down. <gasps> and so the second piddle leg took off running like the first piddle leg to find their younger brother. Meanwhile, the third piddle leg had come to a man carrying a brood of licks. Ah, uh, mister, um, I wonder if you might uh, give me that brood of licks. You see, I'd like to uh, hild a bouse out of bricks. Why, sure. I guess I've had enough of a workout for today. Here you go. Uh, be careful, though. Uh, you're going to need to use both hands. Uh, thank you, mister. I'm on my way. And so the third piddle leg 
built a browse out of fix. And, wouldn't you know it, once again, along came the wig bad boof. Knock, knock. Uh, yes, uh, who's, who's knocking? It's only a charmless little heap. Well, I'm sorry, but we can't have any guests right now. My uh, southern brister came here, and they told me to be on the lookout for someone who's hoeing blouses down. So uh, you'll have to come back later. Bye. Oh, come now. I'm so much better than your brother and sister. Surely you should let me inside? No, sorry. Full house. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll hose your blow down. Go right ahead. Neener, neener, neener. <gasps> <coughs> I hate it when my asthma acts up. Let me in there! Not by the chair, my henny hen hen. No way you're getting in. We have long strokes. Very well, uh, that's all right. I've had enough for today. I'll be leaving now. So long. Uh, I think he's going to chide down the slimly. I might get stuck once or twice, but if Santa can do it, so can I. Let's put a big pot under it on the fire. Like, I am so hungry. Like, wait a minute. How do you totally, like, start a fire? You have to mic a stretch. Come on. So they fit the liar under the pot, and the wig bad wolf chid down the slimney, and that was the end of the wig bad wolf. And the pea little thrigs had stuff woo for dinner. And that's what we call a tongue twister of a story. Actually, we did that story in Spoonerism. Now, if you've never heard of Spoonerism, it was named after a clergyman in England who lived in the 19th century. What's his name, Spoon? His name was Spooner, actually. Oh, it was. Yes, Spooner. And he had a habit. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but he had a habit of switching the first letters of words like that. Uh, for example, instead of instead of saying, we hung out the flags, he would say, we flung out the hags. It's kind of catchy and kind of fun once you get going. Yes, uh, and there was a, a comedian in the 1960s named Archie Campbell who told fairy tales and folk tales in this manner. And this is where I first heard about it and I uh, always wanted to try it. So we finally did. Back when I was in Scouts, I remember going to Scout Camp, and uh, we would tell stories around the campfire, and one of them was Prinderella and the Pransom Hints. Yeah, that's right. Zephyr was in Lone Scouts, which is a division of the Boy Scout troop, or of the Boy Scouts, um, little known version of Boy Scouts. It's for Scouts who can only have a troop of one, Scouts who are on the road, or Scouts who are out in the hills somewhere, or can't get to a meeting for some reason. So if you're interested in Lone Scouts, you might want to do a Google search on that. And we're getting ready to leave L.A. and head back up to the San Francisco Bay Area. Where we have a show coming up December 20th in Palo Alto. Also might mention that our summer schedule is filling in. We are just about booked for all of our summer shows for at library programs across the America. So we've got many shows in Arkansas, Pennsylvania, and Massachusetts, and a few states in between. So if you're in that area and you want to see a show this summer, start marking your calendar. And I'd like to point out that you can now listen to us on your cell phone. Our podcast is now available with this brand new technology that we just found out about when we attended PodCamp West in San Francisco last week. And if you go to Phone Show, that's phone spelt with an F, phoneshow.com, you can sign up for the program and you can get our podcast delivered to you via text messages on your cell phone. I had to try this out, and it works really well. Um, you can also find out about how to get there from our website, activated, uh, of course, activated-storytellers.com or activated.libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N.com, and you'll see the box where you can just enter your phone number and the phone that you'd like to have the messages sent to and get our podcast and several others on your phone. See you next week. We'll see you next week. That's all for now. Activated storytellers perform at schools and libraries nationwide. On stage, we use American Sign Language, physical comedy, imaginative props, and a giant oversized book to bring the stories to life. For booking information, check our website at www.activated-storytellers.com, where you can also find out when the Activated Storytellers will be performing near you read a story, or order one of our audio CDs. Until next time.